Hello, thank you for tuning in again. Uh, today we are uh, picking up, this is part two of uh, this little segment here where we're covering 8.1 operational planning and control. Yeah. So if, you, if you've missed part one, you know, I recommend go back and, and, and watch that part one so you have an idea what we're building on, what we spent some laying the found work, found, found work? <laughs> laying the foundation for this. So Mike, how, how uh, can they get it? We'll put, the, the, I'll, I'll have a little link in the uh, upper right hand corner. Look for a little eye up there. If you click on that, there will be a link to uh, part one there and you can reference that video specifically. Um, if you're just jumping into this series, uh, you're, if you're new to it, I recommend going back and checking out all of the playlist. All of these videos, we've been breaking down a lot of portions of the standard um, and I think you'll find them pretty helpful. But specifically, as we carry forward with today, you'll definitely want to reference last video if you haven't seen it. Yeah. So that Mike, one thing I meant to ask is if, if you're most hardly anyone's actually upgraded to Rev D at this point, so they're all get in some yes. in that process. If all the videos we've made, I think they've got the titles of what the topic was. Yes. So if they're working on a specific thing and you want to know, you you, you could look at that yep. that specific video. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of we we crafted that as a little uh, a reference library, if you will. If you got something specific, go there. And if you don't see something specific, we always mention this, but we want to hear from you. Let us know if you want to see us talk about something or cover it. We'll hit it up on the show and we'll make sure that... You like know, if you want to see me singing? Or... You don't want to see no. that. <laughs> but okay, so to recap quickly uh, for today's episode, um, last time we talked about 7.1 project management in Rev-C is now 8.1 operational planning and control. Um, the requirements have been expanded, and the emphasis is not only on planning like it was, but now also control. Right, and one of the things that we discussed that we're seeing a big change in from Rev C to Rev D is the wiggle words are taken out. So as, as appropriate, is gone. So now this applies, and the auditors, this applies to basically everyone. It was emphasized to us in the, in the auditor training that all organizations should be doing this. They were a little dismayed that Not people... Not they should, they shall be doing this. Right. <laughs> so they shall be doing it. So, um, and the auditors are going to be looking to see that this is taking place. Yes. So last time we talked about uh, applicability and discussed the first part, which was determining the requirements for products and services. Right. So this time what we want to look at is the second primary clause dealing with... And in, in Rev C, they were all kind of lumped together. but. And, and, and kind of implied, but this time they're spelling it out what they're expecting to see, and this is significant. What they're looking for is the first part you were looking at how you're, you're, you're developing the requirements, now you're defining how you're actually gonna meet those requirements. Yes, okay, so last time <clears throat> we talked about, uh, we, we left off in the standard with A, and, and so we're gonna pick right up where we left off there. All right, so B says, Establishing criteria for, one, the processes, two, the acceptance of products and services, note, according to the nature of the product and depending on the specified requirements, statistical techniques can be used to support design verification, for example, reliability, maintainability, and product safety, process control, selection and verification of key characteristics, process capability measurements, statistical process control, design of experiments, verification, failure mode effects, and critical analysis. C, determining the resources needed to achieve conformity to the product and service requirements and to meet on-time delivery of products and services. D, implementing control of the processes in accordance with the criteria. E, determining, maintaining, and retaining documented information to the extent necessary, one, to have confidence that the processes have been carried out as planned, and two, to demonstrate the conformity of products and services to the requirements. F, determining the processes and controls needed to manage critical items, including production process controls when key characteristics have been identified. G, engaging representatives of affected organization functions for operational planning and control, and H, determining the process and resources to support the use and maintenance of the products and services, I, 
determining the products and services to be obtained from external providers, and finally J, establishing the controls needed to prevent the delivery of non-conforming products and services to the customer. That was quite a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, let's go back and put, put the note back up there for sure. a second. And the, the interesting thing, when you look at it, um, you're, what, you're, what you're looking at is the autom it's almost automotive. I was an automotive auditor long before AS9100 existed. And these were requirements. And I, what I'm seeing with the aerospace systems, AS9100, AS9110, AS9120, they're bringing in the automotive requirements. And this is a classic example. Now you're starting to see they're bringing in APQP. There is an actually where the IAQG is developing um, their own APQP, which is Advanced Product Quality Planning, PPAP, which I'm not surprised is pre-production approval process, but a lot of those things are coming into the AS9100 world, so you can expect to see those. So many of you, you know, are not just aerospace defense, but you also have automotive customers. So a lot of this is familiar to you. So, but for those of you that aren't, you know, buckle your seatbelts because it's going to be an interesting trip down the road. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, now we know what the standard says, but what will the auditors be looking for? So it can't just be a checklist saying that you, you know, we've we've considered all the things in, in part A, check, 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 check. You know, what, what they're looking for is not just a checklist. All right, so if, if they can't do a checklist, what should they be doing? Well, what the auditors are going to be looking for is some sort of a robust plan. Okay. You know? And the plan has got, to, has got to address the specific things that were mentioned in the standard under part B. And they gave, Mike read this whole laundry list of what they're looking for, and we didn't comment on them or we'd be here forever, but every one of those things they're going to be looking for. In fact, what I what I have here is the the IAQG AS9100 2016 Auditor Guidance Material. So we went through the auditor training program, and which they was difficult enough. But then this material is out there, which which tells you clause by clause what auditors are should be looking for. Mm -hmm. So. Um, if you want a copy of this, you can get this from uh, from uh, on from IAQG. But if if you just want a copy from us, um, we'll we'll be happy to send you one. Sure. And um, it, I think it's great material to use. And and what I want to do is I just want to take a glance at a couple of these clauses to give you an idea. You know, a checkbox isn't going to get it. A checklist is going to get it. They're looking for how you doing this. So when we go through this, they're They've identified these various things. So, one of the one of the things I'm just going to pull a couple at random here. Again, remember these. Are, this is specifically from the manual to say, "Hey, auditors, look for this." Right. So, they're they're giving you guidance. They're, they they don't the auditors don't have to look at this, but this is what they're expecting them to do. So, one of the requirements was determination of internal external resources to ensure conformity, and bolded them was on time delivery. So. What the guidance is then, for example, what people are you going to need? What facilities are, are going to be used for this project? What materials? What equipment? What finance? What information? Documented information. What outsourced processes, products, and services, including the use of things like enterprise system planning, ERP, management planning systems, MPS, material resource planning, and it goes on. And so you could pick any of these clauses and it would tell us, for example, what are you looking for? Remember where it said identifying the processes needed? Mm -hmm. And then I, I took, and then it mentioned 4.4, we went back there. What the, what's telling here, the auditor should be looking for, when you identify these processes, what are the process inputs? What are the process outputs? What are the controls to ensure the processes are performing? Resources, sequence of interaction, how are you measuring the process? Who's responsible? They're, they're looking for some serious planning be done here. So it's Absolutely. going to be difficult to answer these audit questions if you haven't thought this thing through. And again, we've always said this is a thinking game. Yeah. You know, just it's not what you think about that's going to get you going to burn you. It's what you don't think about. So we just want to bring this to you. And again, this is a really we didn't write this, of course, we're not AQG, but this is a valuable tool. If you like it, like one, give us a holler. If not, you can 
get it from the uh, IAQG. Yes. Uh, and along those lines, you mentioned in the last episode that you, you had a, a hint that might be helpful in uh, how to approach this whole thing and help meet these requirements. Yeah, maybe maybe get out of town before the next audit. <laughs> with that being said, we're partnering with Travelocity for airline tickets. <laughs> no, no, we do have something I think will be helpful. When we're, we've been keep, we keep been pointing at a at, at a plan, a quality plan, and so we have a we have some. The next episode, we're going to talk about what what might that plan look like. Yes. So, so when we come back from the break, we'll talk about that just a little bit more. Learn all about AS9100 RevD with our new online course. This is the best resource to rapidly get you caught up on what's changed and what's new. Our course guides you through each part of the standard and teaches you how to implement it within your own organization. Each section is broken into bite-sized pieces, allowing you to work through the standard at your own pace. You can access the course as many times as you want, making this the number one resource for when you need a quick refresh on a specific topic. Buy it today and get the guidance you need to achieve your RevD certification. Okay, so what is next? Well, we want to talk about how you might document um, this operational planning control process. And we'll also talk about this, the sub-processes, although we won't talk about all of those in the next episode, yes. but we'll lay the foundation. We'll be referring it. to uh, operational risk management, configuration management, product safety, yep. prevention of counterfeit parts. And I also want to bring up a statement in the standard that I actually have no idea what it means. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> All this time we've been telling everyone you're the expert. <laughs> yeah. um, I suppose the cat's out of the bag now. Oh, the cat's over the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that'll, that'll do it uh, uh, for this episode. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and again, as we mentioned earlier, if you have specific questions you want to see us address uh, anything, please hit us up. If you would like a copy of uh, the manual that we're referring to here, Anything you want to see on this show, um, you can email us, you can hit us up on the website, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear should, from you. Should I go through all the other things I was... Uh, you should not go uh, through. <laughs> so until then, have a great week, and we'll see you next time.